The best loadouts in Fortnite OG, aka Chapter 4 Season 5, is what we're going to be going over in today's video. First off, like always, the best loadout for Zero Build consists of 5 item categories that you always need in order to win more. They are close range weapons, long range weapons, movement, cover, and finally, of course, heals. Close range weapon you want for close up fights. Long range for when you see people that are too far to use your close range gun for. Movement to get to height, or when you need to run and heal after a fight that was out in the open. Cover items for if you run into someone out in the open and you don't have cover to shoot behind. And heals, well, to heal. First of all, for long range weapons, we are talking about ARs mostly. The best gun to carry this season, or this week for this season, because the game's updating every single week, is the Assault Rifle slash the Scar. The Burst is the second best and very, very underrated. It has a slow rate of fire, which stops it from being the best gun in this category, but you can actually hit longer range shots with it than you would expect. And on top of that as well, when you really hit someone with this, it can fry. The number three spot for long range weapons is the scoped assault rifle, then the hunter bolt action, and then the bolt action sniper. When it comes to rarities, seeing if one rarity of one gun is better than another, that only really matters for the AR versus the burst. I'd take the blue burst over the gray and green AR, and obviously the higher rarity ARs I'll take over the lower rarities of the burst. For close range, we're primarily talking shotguns this season. Both the tack and pump are great. If playing squads, I'd always take the tack over the pump, but if I'm playing solos, take the pump. But if your aim isn't great, just always take the tack. It's a lot more forgiving. Rarity comes into a massive play here. Take the legendary pump over everything in solos as it can do 200 damage to the head, unless your aim is bad. And then on top of that for rarities, take the legendary and epic tack over any other pump. Finally, when it comes to the lower rarities of both these guns, the blue, green, and gray pump are a lot better than the blue, green, and gray tack, so I'll take that over the other one. The legendary tack this season is going to be this season's exotic maven. It packs a punch and is really, really good. But in all honesty, you shouldn't really be getting that close range in fights and zero builds in the first place. So if your rotations are great and are on point, you want to take the pump and then the AR, because typically you'd AR shoot someone and then you'd pump them to finish. You don't want to have a close range fight where you have to use the pump first of all. If you're going to be carrying a sniper or a scoped weapon rather than the standard AR or burst, I'll definitely take the tack and the tack pairs really well with the burst but not so much for pump and burst together. The reason as well why you want to carry the tack in squads or trios is because typically you have to fight multiple people at the same time and not having to switch guns and just reloading your weapon is going to do you a lot better in fights. This season I wouldn't use SMGs at all. They don't fit into the meta for zero build and with not enough inventory spots they're only really great for off spawn in POIs when looting. So if you're in a place where there's a lot of buildings around, SMGs are great for that. But once you leave those POIs, you really want an assault rifle and just the shotgun. Movement. The grappler is the first pick here, but only use it for height or for rotating after a fight. Using it to run isn't ideal as you move slow and you don't go very far with it, but it can work out from time to time if you get lucky. Do not use this item to rotate around the map. With it only having 20 uses, you need to save it for when you need it most. So after a fight, when you need it go heal and you need to go to somewhere where there's cover. After taking the grappler, the next best movement item for our limited options is impulses. They're similar to shockwaves, they just don't take you as far, plus you can take fall damage with them, so be super super careful with them. The last movement item I'll take is smoke grenades. They can be super useful in a fight for cover to rotate to a point or to throw down to heal after a fight, rather than rotating to a spot to heal right away. Note, you don't have to throw them where you are going if you're trying to use them for cover. You can throw them at a person who's shooting at you if you're trying to use them for movement or you can throw it in between you and the person so that, it's, so that their view is obstructed and you can use it for movement. Speaking of cover, you want to be using bunkers primarily. Bunkers are more dynamic and better in fights than port forts This is because port forts obstruct a lot of your view. You throw it up and you have this massive area around you where you can't see and you can't see directly behind you very, very easily. This means people can sneak up on you super, super easily. So bunkers are better. If you don't have bunkers, I'll still take the port forts however. port forts being the second choice here. Lastly, for cover, once again, take smoke grenades. They're very dynamic and can fit both in the cover and movement category. They're super good for when you want to pop a chug jug, but all you have is trees around you and no buildings, and I've been doing that already this season. Last category here before we get into some other important notes is heals. The heal pool has been widely reduced this season. Minis are the best heals this season because you can pop them fast mid-fight to get your health up or after a fight fast before someone else rotates on you. After minis, the second best heal to carry is half pots. 
For the same reason, although a little bit slower, it's not gonna take a long time to get some health back. The third best heal item to carry is Chug Jugs, but at one Chug Jug per slot and 15 seconds to take it, it's very, very limiting. And a lot of the time, someone will probably push you from seeing visual order of you taking it and you won't be able to get it off in the first place. After Chug Jugs, I'll take bandages for the speed factor and then medkits. So similar reasons all around. Lastly, if you don't have movement or cover, or if you've used them all up and it's towards the end game, carry other things. Pick up a chug jug if you already have minis. If you have no cover left, take a sniper. It's better to fill a slot than rather have an empty slot in the game. The game is updating next week for loadouts. So if this changes drastically, I'll make another video on it, but it should be pretty similar until we get into week three and four, which I'll probably make an update video then. Subscribe for me making this video, helping you out. Help me reach 10K subscribers. Leave a like down below if you like the video and remember to take care of yourselves and be kind to yourselves. Catch you guys on the flip side. Goodbye.